Tuesdays is known as $2 Tuesdays at wagertalk.com and sportsmemo.com, where you can get the hottest handicappers, best bet, or daily package for only $2. What is up, guys? Welcome back here to Wager Talk TV. I'm your host, Andrew McGinnis, joined by my co-host, Carmine Bianco, and Mr. Don Buster in his usual Tuesday spot. We are fresh off a sweep of NHL best bets or power plays from last night. Good way to start off this week, Carm. And uh, as you just pointed out on Twitter probably five minutes ago, last week was pretty good as well. So these best bets, man, they're rolling. Yeah, uh, it was this funny. Someone tweeted us uh, something like it's about time or whatever. We went like 12 and 3 on these show best bets. <laughs> Last week, we went 3 and 0. Oh. Uh, it's like a 15 and 3 run in best bets, but I guess it wasn't good enough because three of those plays did lose. So uh, we'll try and be a little bit better for you guys uh, today on the show. How was your night last night, Carm? Uh, you know, I uh, split on my NHL sides last night. Uh, Colorado steamrolling along, uh, another, their seventh win. Uh, that was a win for me in regulation time. I also had the Calgary flames in regulation and they just, uh, um, they just completely got out. Even though the final score was two, one, they got completely outplayed by Ottawa. I, that, 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 what a performance by, by the senators last night. Maybe the, uh, the, the shine has come off, uh, Sutter after, after three wins. So we'll, we'll see. But uh, big card tonight, three games I really love. And uh, let's see if we can put some winners up. Ottawa continues to be pesky. We'll definitely be interested in talking about them uh, moving forward. But uh, for myself, uh, you know, pretty good night. Had to hit my 5% uh, college hoops play there on Florida State. And uh, nice to not really have to sweat that one out too much. They led the whole way. So that was kind of nice. I appreciate all of you guys that hopped on that play with me. NHL, I had Colorado on the puck line, uh, just like Carmine mentioned there. But uh I got to say, guys, and uh, this is kind of uh, therapy quickly for me, I got a little bit greedy here. I gave out a parlay, 2%. It was Islanders puck line, Carolina money line, and Colorado puck line. If you watched the games last night, you know where I got greedy. That would have been a plus 950 hit. Uh, Islanders win by one in overtime there. Tough one there. Uh, we'll bounce back here tonight in the NHL. Uh, but Colorado did get it done at plus 115 for a 4% winner. Buster, how was your night, man? I know you're betting the March Madness. How's that been going for you? Actually, yeah, the night was uh, very good last night. Went uh, five and three uh, for my all access clients. Also uh, put out a package that went two and one. So everything's good. I had uh, 5% on the weekend myself. I had Oral Roberts. They went OR, which is very nice. Uh, kind of a pun, Oral Roberts win OR. But anyways, uh, so that, that was good. Golf was good again. I had a couple of guys in the top 10. I had Hadwin plus 750 in the top 10. I had uh, Brandon Steele plus 500. So uh, just starting out with that golf, but it's uh, been doing very well. And uh, small cart and we only have five games and looking forward to a couple of them. That's for sure. Small card, and we are going to discuss all of those games. We're going to take apart the Red Wings and the Predators game. The Florida Panthers take on the Blackhawks. The Lightning and the Stars go head to head. Uh, the Coyotes will try and get some revenge here against the Avalanche on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. And the Devils and the Flyers will go head-to-head. -head. Before we dive into these games, guys, it is $2 Tuesday at both Wager Talk and Sports Memo. Uh, we really hope you guys took advantage of $9 Monday yesterday at both websites. We have Pure Lock uh, over at Sports Memo, and we have The Prez uh, at wagertalk.com with $2 Tuesday plays. Grab those plays for less than a cup of coffee. Uh, those guys are running extremely, extremely hot right now. And, uh, you know, hats off to uh, Prez. Obviously, he's on here on Puck Time all the time. Uh, we were talking actually off air. He's doing extremely well uh, in the NHL right now. So grab his best bet there at wagertalk.com. Let's get into our games here, guys. Let's dive into our very first game here. On the slate, we are going to talk Red Wings and Predators. And, Carm, I know this isn't the game that's going to make you uh, pour your glass of wine or pour your scotch uh, or whatever it might be and get excited to watch this game. Unless you have a bet on it, you might not be too pumped up to bet or watch the Predators, Red Wings. It's not really the best matchup of the night. However, we're not looking for entertainment. We're looking to make some money. So, Carm, how do we make some money here on this game? 
Yeah, first of all, like my, I, I'm r literally rubbing my eyes. My rods and cones are screwed up every time Buster comes up on that screen with that <laughs> rainbow background of his. Like, I'm going to ship him um, a, a green screen so we can get a proper background there. I, I, I'm not sure what company comes there. It's FedEx, FedMex. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to send you something, man, because my eyes are, uh, it's killing me. Listen, you know what, Nashville Tom, is playing. The joke's getting old. Yeah, Tom. whatever. The joke's getting it, it, old, right? Well, so we need one anyways. Just, yeah, <laughs> maybe we do. Buster, if it's okay with you, can I preview this game? Thanks, man. Um, Nashville, uh, Nashville, Detroit. Listen, Nashville played extremely well in that game against Dallas. Um, I'm not sure if it was a product of how well Nashville was playing in that third period or the fact that Dallas was completely depleted. If you looked at their bench, they had 11 or 12 guys. They had the defensive players had – were blocking shots, taking hits, had, got, had gone to the dressing room. Uh, it, you looked at the bench, and it looked like a uh, a beer league team. There was 11 guys on the bench. Um, there just wasn't much uh, left there, and we'll talk about that when we talk about the Dallas-Tampa game. But Nashville's making that bit of a push right now. It's still the goaltending thing for me. That's the biggest thing with them, the whole 1-1-8 one one with Saros and Pekka Rene. Detroit's playing better, you know what I mean? Uh, uh they, they've stolen wins against uh, Dallas and, and Carolina and, and one against Tampa. Those are impressive when you're beating the top three teams in the division uh, at, at home. But when they hit the road, not so great. This is a team that doesn't play, doesn't carry um, that same uh, home form that they've had over the last little while on the road. For your first game back for Nashville after seven on the road, and I talked about uh, on yesterday's show about some of the team records I don't have them with me right now, but some of the team record, when you look at the lower three and other than the North, uh, it's something like two and 15 um, for um, for the bottom three teams across the three divisions in uh, in the U.S. Uh, when they uh, play their first game at home off a four game or longer road trip, they're two and 15 in that next game. So it's something to keep uh, um, uh you know, it's sort of in your thought process when you're looking at these. Um, for me, it's still going to be Nashville tonight. Uh, they're going to make a push for this. Uh, it's going to be a battle between, uh, you know, this Nashville team, the, obviously this, um, the Dallas team, uh, the Chicago team on who gets, you know, that third, third spot right now. Chicago occupies it right now, but, you know, Nashville, Columbus, Dallas, they all have a shot at that third spot. Those first three are sewn up. It, they're going to Tampa. They're going to, they're going to Carolina. They're going to Florida. So uh, Nashville to get the points tonight. Yeah, Carm, while you're shipping uh, Buster at green screen, do you mind shipping me some new curtains? Because uh, this is just starting to really bother me on this end here with the green screen. I'm just blinded uh, by the lights here in, in the East Coast. So if you're shipping things to people, uh, I'll take some curtains, please. But uh, for me, when I look at this game, I, I look at the, 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 the Predators, and Carmine always mentions about looking ahead at, uh, at games and their schedules. But if we look back and go the other direction, we can see that this Predators team has just played pretty much the best teams that this division has to offer. And although they didn't have wins, Buster, in all of these games, I would use the word compete. They have competed in all of those games against the top teams like Carolina and like Tampa Bay. Now they play a bottom feeder in the Red Wings. I feel like they'll be ready to beat down on a poor competition versus, you know, finally not playing a really top team. I, I can I can see you uh, saying that, Andrew. But uh, for for me here, this will probably be a stay away game, o only because uh, as as far as 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 yeah. Thanks, Carmine. Yeah, don't shuffle because I can hear that stuff in my ear, and then I'm thinking, why why are you shuffling your papers? I can hear that in my ear, and now it takes me off thought. You know how I am, Carmine. I have to concentrate one thing at a time. So thank you, uh, Chris. I appreciate on, you Carm. telling me. Come on, Carmine. What are you doing, so, man? <laughs> Anyways, Come Carmine on. did make a good point. Nashville is uh, coming coming uh, home, and they've uh, they were I believe it was an eight game road trip. Uh, maybe Carmine's right, a seven game. Anyways, first game home's always tough, of course. Detroit has been playing very well. They do stink on the road. The problem with Detroit too, their their special teams are terrible. You know, thirtieth on the power play, 29th on the penalty kill, not that good. Grice is in net. Maybe he can uh, make a bunch of saves tonight to keep them in the game. But here's an interesting thing for anybody that just automatically thinks Nashville's a play. Detroit has won the last seven of eight in Nashville. 
So you have Nashville with the uh, seven uh, losing seven out of eight to Detroit here. You have Detroit playing well. You have Nashville first home. For me, the total is five and a half. I think you're going to get a close, tight game. I'll take the under five and a half. Under five and a half there from Buster, and uh, I definitely agree with that, Buster. I'll, I'll, I'll second that play as well. So if you dislike my Predators play, uh, at least we can agree on one thing here on the under. I believe it will be a low-scoring game. And we have seen some great goaltending from the Predators. They're facing a lot of shots recently. We've seen some great goaltending from them. Our next game up here is the clear marquee matchup of the night. I was kind of scratching my head trying to figure out which segment would be our marquee matchup, which game would be our marquee matchup. Then I kind of said it's pretty obvious. Panthers, Blackhawks. Blackhawks have been playing some pretty good hockey over the past couple of weeks. The question is, how will they fare against a team like the Florida Panthers uh, that although they're not blowing teams out every night, they just seem to always find a way to get the job done. And I've said this all the time, and this isn't really a betting thing, guys, but I, I truly do believe that Barkov is probably one of the most underrated, uh, under-talked about players in the entire National Hockey League. And that top line just continues to play uh, extremely well. But I think the biggest improvement for this Florida Panthers team on the season has been their defensemen. They're finding the way to get the puck out of their end extremely fast. They're not making errors like they used to. There's not as many two-on-ones, three-on-ones going back the other way. And I feel like that will really help them tonight. If they can stay out of the box, uh, it'll be really, really crucial. Special teams, guys, will be crucial in this game both teams are top of the league in special teams uh i think the florida panthers here are the play i'll be looking at betting them uh minus one half bet puck line half bet on the money line here buster what are your thoughts on this game yeah i can't i can't fault you for that play andrew florida's beat them uh four times has won all four games they've played this year beat them pretty handily too except for the one game uh, i'm going uh, on the over here i'm a little surprised and i know why that the total is only six, but it's it's just pretty high. These should be sixes and a halves all day long. But as we all know here, the unders have been hitting like crazy, probably for the last two weeks, pretty solid. So uh, the odds maker is making you, you know, with the six and making you buy a little juice. But to me, love this game over six. I already gave it to my clients. Um, Chicago, they play better at home. Chicago also is coming home from a long road trip themselves. Florida, they, they offensively, they just shoot the puck in the net. They, they have well over 40 shots almost, it seems like, almost every game. They played a great game against Tampa the other day. Lost 5-3, but, I mean, they played really well. This is a team that, you know, you'll have to look out for. I Last year we were talking, as, because I always had a little soft spot for Florida, and um, we were talking about Quenville. I, I kind of put said that, you know, maybe the game's passed him by. Well, I'm gonna. I was wrong. I think he's done an excellent job with this club here. Uh, for me, again, their power play is really good. They're tenth in power play, eleventh in penalty kill, and Florida will be getting some goals tonight because Chicago's uh, penalty kill is atrocious. They're twenty eighth, but they got a great power play. So to me, I, I really like this game o over six all, all day long. For me, over six here. It's hard to argue with it, uh, Buster. I could list probably you know five or six stats and, and trends right now that would back up that over between those two teams. We don't have time for that. Uh, take our word for it. Every single number and stat right now for both teams uh, really does align well for the uh, the over in this game. Carl, I, before I throw it to you, I wanted to ask you one question. How, does it impact your decision on this game, the fact that Florida's coming off a loss against Tampa Bay versus if they're coming off a win against easy competition? Does it help your decision betting this game, knowing they're in a bounce-back situation? Uh, it it uh, it's part of the thought process, but uh, I'm not just taking that mere stat and, um, and and putting it into play here and saying, well, I'm going to take Florida just because you know, mm -hmm. just course, because uh, you know, what I mean, they're they're coming off a loss. Um, we see it a lot of the time. Uh, you team, teams will lose two or three games in a row. It happens. It it very well happens. Here's the thing with um, with this game, Andrew, when I'm looking at it, and I tend to agree with uh, with Buster in the sense of I, I do like the over in this game. But, you know, if you look, you, I, I did like a look ahead, and I talked to people about the look aheads, because sometimes those look aheads are very important in not just a long winning streak, but a slew of seven or eight games where if you bet on the team and you think they're going to win 
six of the eight games and they're not huge favorites in those games, you're going to make money. It's finding those chunks of games. And the Florida, uh, and, and this Florida Chicago game, you look at Chicago's, um, you know, they've gone through a stretch of their last 10 games, seven of them were against top teams in this division. They now are going to get a bit of a breather. And no, Florida is not a bit of a breather because they're, they're, they're still one of the top three teams. But of their next eight games, seven of, the, seven of them are at home and some of them are favorable ones. Even though they get Carolina at home, they've done well against the Carolina team. They haven't done well against Florida, but all four of those games, I believe, were in Florida. Um, you know, the funny thing is you look at the Chicago team and at home, They've never lost two games in a row this season. You can look at that fact. You can look at the fact that, and these aren't, these are just trends or these are just funny little things that you can discuss amongst yourselves, but they've zigzagged their last 12 games. They've gone win, loss, win, loss, win, loss. They lost their last game. So if you're going on the zigzag theory, then you take Chicago home as a live dog. I don't look at it that way. I look at more as, uh, you know, Chicago, uh, that was a tough, tough stretch for them. They're now coming home, first game off a six-game road trip. Um, once again, you look at those those stats of teams coming home off the first game. Doesn't normally bode well for them. Um, and this is why, while I think that Chicago could be a live dog tonight, I'm not willing to put my money on it. But I do think there's going to be goals in this game. So for me, I'm going to go with Buster on this one and the over six. Over six is uh, pretty much a consensus play here on the show. We'll see how it works out because I do believe we will see some goals. And Carm, you know, it, it was all fun and games and all in, in good fun. We were having some jokes in the direction of the Chicago Blackhawks, uh, you and I, but especially you. You were throwing some jokes towards them, but you said there would be some regression. So on a serious note, uh, if we look at their schedule and look at who they played recently, over that 10-game scale, the regression really hit. You know, they, they kind of had a wake-up call, a little bit of a reality check. So I'm curious to see how this game pans out, but I do lean here towards this Florida team. I believe they're just way more well-rounded, and Chicago will need a lot of power plays uh, to score in this game. Uh, Tampa Bay and Dallas, our line change game here. We see minus 150 turn into minus 170 for the Tampa Bay Lightning over the Dallas Stars. And I'll tell you, Carm, I believe this Dallas Stars team has been a very – weird team to read all season long. It's felt like they've either won games 4 nothing or they've lost them 6-1. Uh, I use the word compete all the time, and I don't really know how we can use that word here in this situation because the Dallas Stars, um, you know, they're not really competing against the best. But all of a sudden, we're getting some good defense out of them. We're getting some good goaltending, and maybe we start seeing some better play out of them. But I just look at this Tampa Bay team. I look at when they face any type of adversity – they usually come back. And, you know, we, we saw a stretch where they had one or two decent games where they weren't really their best performances. And all of a sudden they came back and they're playing better hockey. So as far as the segment name here, though, Carm, minus 150 turns into a minus 170. I mean, what, what does that tell us, really? Well, it, it tells us a couple things. Uh, it tells us that uh, the markets are reacting to the fact that Tampa is one of the best teams in the league. Um, right now, if 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 the... Playoffs started right now. I would want to see only two teams in the Stanley Cup final, and that is Tampa Bay and the Colorado Avalanche. They are uh, both playing lights out hockey, and lights out hockey doesn't mean that you're going to win every game. You know, Tampa lost to Nashville, they lost to uh, the Detroit Red Wings, but they're winning. Uh, they're just winning in abundance of games. When you're winning almost 700% of uh, 70% of your games, uh, you are a very good team. Um, there's no questioning that this is a very good team, uh, as is thing as Colorado. They're just teams that they should be play on teams, uh, for you. How you approach betting these teams is, you know, if you're fine with lane 170, you take 170. If you want to take a regulation line, you take a regulation line and you, uh, you mitigate the amount of big that you're paying or you take the puck line. But these are games that if Tampa's playing Dallas, I, I have to figure, uh, over a 10-game span, Tampa is going to win seven of those 10 games. This is just one of those seasons for Dallas. Didn't start off well um, with the whole COVID thing. They've been playing catch-up ever since. And the problem with this team now is you look at that game against Nashville. Um, I, I talked about it. You'll have to see how this team um, bounces back from that game because they played that whole third period with 11 guys on the bench. Now, 
it stands to reason you can say to yourselves, well, you know, uh, some of those guys left, they'll be back tonight. But what toll did that third period take on the guys who actually had to pick up those minutes and play more minutes in that game? It takes a toll on the whole team. And uh, another thing with this team is, unfortunately, because of that early break, they're going to play a crazy schedule, this Dallas team, of like 20 games in like 42 nights or 44 nights. That's an absolutely insane schedule. It's going to wear down this team. It's just one of those things where, unfortunately, as much as I like this Dallas team, I just think that the odds are stacked against this team and eventually making a run um, for a playoff spot. So as far as the game goes for me, it's Tampa Bay. And if we look at this game, guys, and look at uh, how Dallas has been playing, how did they get to the Stanley Cup Finals last year? Because it wasn't with a dynamic offense. It was a great defense. And if we look across their games this year, they have been allowing goals left and right against top-tier teams. Last game, Buster, was 4-3 in favor of the Tampa Bay Lightning when these two teams met. Tampa 7-1, their last eight, against the Dallas Stars here. And Carr mentions that hectic schedule the Dallas will have to deal with down the stretch and the fact they had some COVID stoppages to start this season off. The line move, to me, makes sense. But how do you approach betting this game here? Yeah, Andrew, if you guys remember right, last Tuesday when I was on this show, we had the same game, Tampa Bay at Dallas. The difference last week was Tampa Bay was playing a back-to-back. And um, I watched that whole game, and I know the score was 4-3. But it was 3-1. Dallas pulls her goaltender and scores twice with the goaltender pull to tie it up and then lose. So it was just maybe a little luck, whatever you want to call it. I'm not sure. Tampa Bay has dominated this Dallas club for the most part. They beat them 5-0, 2-0, and then they did win in, uh, I think it was a shootout last last Tuesday, 4-3. For me, you might want to play the under 5.5. You got Vasilevsky and uh, Ottinger's in net tonight, so – Two good goaltenders. Uh, Also, though, I I really think Dallas, if they – I think I even said this last week. Dallas needs to start fast. If they get behind this Tampa Bay team, it seems like they just can't do anything. And and, and they are playing shorthanded, as uh, as Carmine uh, has noted. So um, I'm not sure I've seen enough out of Dallas to change my mind uh, that they – I said last week that I don't think they're making the playoffs – and uh, Carmine made a good point on all those games that they have to play. Uh, I, I, I just, it's, it's too bad. I'm not, I don't think Dallas can make the playoffs. And today's play, it'll be under five and a half. And I also, if you're going to play Tampa Bay, of course, I'm not playing 170. But in regulation, that'd be a good play if you ask me. I, I just find a tough buster with that five and a half, just because I think that, you know, it takes two, two partners to go under and two partners to go over. And I think that, Tampa Bay has proven they can really carry the way with overs on their own, averaging 3.7 goals a game and seven of their last 10 going over. So I think Dallas, they would love to play an under-styled game. Absolutely. I just think Tampa Bay wants no part of that, and they'll put up three or four goals. That's what worries me here. I think if Dallas beats Tampa Bay, they're not going to beat Tampa 3-1, 3-2. I I feel like if they beat Tampa Bay, they're winning like 4-3 or 5-3. I feel like if you like Dallas tonight, Obviously, you can get some nice plus money, but just go ahead and grab their team total because if Dallas even competes even one little bit, they're probably going to get over their team total. Any thoughts there on that, Carm? Yeah, no. uh, the team totals have been – I think you're referencing the team totals. Uh, I was looking at my notes. but um, They've been taboo for me uh, the last little while. It seems like uh, I take an under two and a half and on a team total and there's an empty net goal. I take an over two and a half – and there's no empty net goals and stuff. I'm just I just avoiding team totals for now. Sorry. No problem. No problem. Just asking around. Just asking around. See if I can get some clarity from you guys. Uh, and, and number you know, two, I'll just make, can I make one more comment, Andrew, about what you uh, had Go said there? Uh, is, yeah, just just as far as uh, for for Tampa Bay, they are playing their sixth game in eight nights, I believe. And again, they might just play a little defense. The way I look at, it, they might play a little defense. And like I said, Dallas. If you fit, if you figure without those two empty net goals, they have scored one goal against Tampa Bay in almost you know three games. Really, like I say, they only had, they lost five nothing, two nothing, and they were down three one with like two minutes left in that last game last Tuesday. So that's why I understand what you're saying, but Tampa Bay might 
beat him again 3-1. It was 2-1. That's, that's why I said the regulation might be the play because I'm not laying 170 in case Dallas decides to show up tonight. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I definitely, definitely agree with that, guys. Our dump and chase segment is the exact same as yesterday. And I chose this to be the exact same one as yesterday because, well, number one, there weren't that many massive favorites. Number two, I wanted to fill the segments with other games that were more filling. Uh, but number three, to see if we'll see any type of bounce back effort here. You know, I was happy to cash a puck line ticket with the Avalanche. They have certainly looked solid as of late. And again, we look back to the last couple times the Avalanche have played the Coyotes and the shot counts, all the advanced metric guys were having a Christmas day because they were literally so excited to see the expected goal amount, the expected power play goals. Um, all of the advanced metrics pretty much said the Colorado should have blown them out. And then yesterday, we finally see pretty much an absolute one-sided contest here between the Avalanche and the Coyotes. So obviously, we have a minus 260. Buster, you have made it very clear like you were a politician and that was your main message to the crowd that you do not want to lay big numbers. So how do we bet this game if you're not going to bet lay minus, minus 260 here? Well, here's how we bet this game, Andrew. Uh, two of the three games in Arizona has gone over this five and a half. Now, I know it's juiced to the under, but here's why I want a five and a half. There's no group hour tonight for Colorado. Jonas Johansson, the old uh, Buffalo Sabre goaltender, he's going to be probably making his first start tonight. They already sent that Miska down to the minors. So, and uh, he hasn't been too too good for them. He's uh, not for, sorry, for Colorado, but he wasn't too good in Buffalo. He's at 379 goals against average, uh, 884 save percentage. So here's what I'm thinking. As you said, Colorado has been, I mean, they've been just outplaying and shooting like crazy, like 40, 45 shots a game against this Arizona. They've dominated the game. I think they probably do the same thing again tonight. They're going to protect him. Problem is, Arizona, this is now last game, last night's game. That was their first road game back, road game. So, uh, sorry, first home game off a long road. Sorry about that. So, um, tonight, though, I think they got to – they got to play a little bit better. So there might be a little bit of offense there. <laughs> and the beautiful thing for uh, Colorado, too, to, to maybe add some goals is that Hill's going to be a net for Arizona. So you got two, not two good goaltenders. You have five and a half. And we saw a lot all the time, Andrew. We talk all about it all the time how it's easy to get to six, even with these low scoring five and a halves. And that's what happened last night. Colorado's up 3 yeah. 1. They score an empty net goal, and then they get a cheap one uh, with 21 seconds. So they've scored two goals late to make it 5-1, put it over. Uh, so for me, of course, I can't lay the 245. That's not happening. Uh, Colorado could, and the reason why I even go like caution people on the Colorado, because they might be thinking, guess what? We have Vegas Thursday, Saturday. Who's, who's this Arizona club? So – I caution of going against them because I think Arizona is going to try to give them a game tonight. And by trying to give them a game means they open it up, which means over five and a half with two pretty AHL goaltenders in net. You're not getting the best goaltenders. That's for sure. You're getting a second half of a back-to-back. -back, that's for sure. And you're going to get one pissed off team. That's for sure. So I'm right there with Buster here on the over five and a half. And, uh, it's fair to say the Coyotes got embarrassed. Also fair to say right now that uh, the Avalanche are completely rolling here, guys. Our barn burner segment, it's the Flyers, it's the Devils. And uh, Carm, Andrew, you have am – yep. Am I talking about the game or not, or the Colorado Avalanche game? <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. I'm used to going to you it's first, been, Carm. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's great because it's been like about three weeks – since the last time okay, you just okay. sort of forgot about me. But, I was so uh, excited you because mind. I was going to segue yeah. you into this segment with the next game. So you can segue yourself into the Devils and Flyers game. Yeah, I'll talk about this quick game quickly. It's the last game of the look ahead uh, that I had for the Colorado Avalanche. Um, seven, seven straight wins, likely an eighth win here. And I get the whole thing about the backups. But, you know, these teams did play um, – Colorado did beat Arizona in uh, in a game where they they had the backups in. I think it was it was uh, uh, Mishka and Hill in. Uh, it's going to be Hill and um, I think you mentioned it uh, from the Sabers. 
Johansson in, in net uh, tonight. That game finished 3-2. Uh, four of the goals came in the third period when the uh, score was um, uh, it was only one nothing Colorado. They made it three nothing, and then Arizona got a couple late ones in the last like ninety seconds to make that a three two game. Uh, even the three way line is is uh, um, a little high in this one. It's like minus one seventy. I think the only way to approach it is if you're going to take Colorado, um, is uh, you you lay the puck line and you take any any plus money that might be available. I don't think they're looking ahead to, to Vegas at all. Um, that That's a great game, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, listen, if you watch the Colorado game last night, they have a commitment to defense now that they've never had before. They know that they just win games 3-1, 4-1. They're getting the scoring because uh, teams can't play. Uh, teams have to open it up a little bit. You can't clog that zone when you go down 2 or 3 nothing. Arizona had seven shots through – Halfway through the second period, again, you're not going to win games with seven shots on goal against uh, against the Colorado Avalanche. I understand the whole commitment to defense that, that the Coyotes uh, have. I think it's a little different tonight. We probably see some goals. But I, I'm not so sure the fact that it's not Grubauer and it's Gustafson that it, that it all of a sudden equates to goals by Arizona. Uh, it uh, Sometimes those backups, the teams play well for them. You look at... The Detroit, uh, sorry, the Ottawa game yesterday. Uh, Gustafson making his first start uh, yesterday for Ottawa and gets the the two one win. So sometimes you see you see these teams play well defensively. For me, it's Colorado. We'll take them on the puck line and let's get into that uh, final game. Yeah, I'm gonna blame that on uh, on Buster's background. Actually, I just got a little bit dizzy and uh, sleepy for a second. Got kind of brainwashed uh, while I was looking at Buster's background, so I forgot exactly where I was, what I was doing here, Carm. But uh, Give us an example of the splits you've been talking about, Carm, with this Flyers totals. Because right now, the Devils, as I see for this team, under in six six straight games for them, but over in seven of their last ten on the road. What about the Flyers here? What is this split that you've been mentioning over the past several days? It's been working for you. Yes. Uh, well, I always talk about, and I wanted to talk more about, um, you know, more about the side than than total here, and I, I get it. Listen, uh, you look at things like you know the Flyers. Uh, this is for both teams the second, or sorry, the the, the third game in four nights. So uh, while that is sometimes a factor for some people and, and how they gamble on a game or take a game, I'm looking at the fact that you know this you know the Flyers um, they played extremely well last night, losing effort, but they played well. You want to see a team compete. At the end of the day, you want to see them pick up points as well too and wins. This is probably a really good spot for them to pick up a win. Uh, they're four and one this year on the second of back to backs. Um, you know, I look at the goalie. It was uh, Elliot last night. It's Carter Hart tonight. I talk about the home splits when you talk about splits. He's 30, 34, 15, and five at home as a goalie, 2.39 goals against average, 0.923 save percentage. That's taken a hit this year. This year at home, he's three, three, and two, uh, 3.38 goals against average, 0.893 save percentage and yet as bad as those numbers are it's still over three quarters of a goal better at home than it is on the road that's how much uh carter hart has struggled and it's it the struggle is with the team as well too they're just not keeping pucks out of the net this is a team that i believe uh prior to last night's game had gone over the total in 10 of their last 11 games so if you're looking for goals you're probably going to find them tonight but with that said I actually think a, a majority of those goals are going to come from this Flyers team. Couturier uh, did actually end up playing last night. Uh, he, he, he uh, I think we talked about in the show that he wasn't going to play, but he took uh, part in the in the pregame skate. Uh, was a um, a game time decision. D did play in that game. I like the Flyers tonight to bounce back off that last 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 night and in a big way tonight. Game goes over the total. Buster. Buster, under, over here. We're tight for time. Uh, as far as the total goes, I, I would take it over. I agree with Carmine uh, for sure. So we're tight on time. Over for sure. All right. I appreciate that, Buster. And we'll throw it back to you for uh, your best bet, your power play here on the show, and anything you had to promote for tonight. Well, for my show best bet, uh, we if we had a little more time, I was going to talk about the New Jersey game here. Uh, I'm going to take New Jersey first period money line 
plus 125. So even if it's a tie after the first period, you push. Uh, like, like New Jersey, they've won three of the last four. I don't like them to win this game. Philadelphia mentally has got to be just, I don't know what they're thinking. They, they've had a bunch of bad games where they've just got destroyed. Last night, they play fantastic, like lights out hockey and still lose in overtime 2-1. Mentally, I think it's going to take them a period or so to get into this game. New Jersey's won three out of four. Give me New Jersey, first period money line, plus 125. Karim, let's keep the uh, best bets rolling, man. What do you have for us? All right, so uh, NHL three pack up for tonight. Going to make my best bet. Um, unfortunately, I think we're on the uh, opposite sides here uh, with my good friend and buddy. I'm going to take the Flyers tonight on the puck line, minus one and a half, plus 150. That's my play. Uh, go Flyers. Go Gritty. <laughs> we, hey, Carmen, uh, yeah. we can both win that game. We can. <laughs> and uh, Carm does have some exciting soccer plays coming up for the end of this week, but it's a little bit of an international break right now uh, for a lot of soccer action. Uh, I will have some college basketball posted for a little bit later on in the week, but for myself, it's going to be a two-pack up in NHL for tonight. And my best bet is going to be Florida on the puck line here against the Chicago Blackhawks. I believe that Blackhawks regression has really shown Florida is a top tier team and uh, they can play defense now. That's really changed the name of their game. I know a lot of people love the over in that game, but I feel like if Florida plays a little, little bit of defense, they'll win this game easily here. And it's a great price at plus 160. Carmine, Flyers plus 150. Buster, Devils first period. Plus 125. And guys, for the record, it's still possible for Buster and Carm to both win their best bets. Let's keep this thing going here, guys. Thanks a lot to Carm and Buster. We'll see you guys tomorrow right here on Wager Talk TV. Tuesdays is known as $2 Tuesdays at wagertalk.com and sportsmemo.com, where you can get the hottest handicappers, best bet, or daily package for only $2.